you can escape gold rank in your next few games. If you just learned this secret strategy, I used to escape from gold one all the way to plat in just five games. I would also leave timestamps for each step, but I recommend you watch all the way through. Let's first talk about that rank system this season. In regards to gold rank, it's very similar to last season in the sense that you get taken away around 5% bus fare for death off sport and gain a lot of points for eliminations and placement. With this in mind, I would personally recommend that you land at a POI. If you get at least one kill off spawn, that should be enough to gain points. Then the higher rank the player is compared to you, the more you're going to gain. At this current time though, I would recommend you step away from all the newer POIs like Mount Olympus, Grimgate and the Underworld if you're actually looking to gain points. Any place that has medallions or any sort of broken chests in the game are more likely to be over contested, resulting in it being very hard for you to gain points and survive off spawn. The best place in the whole of the rank currently in terms of loot you get to the ratios of players is actually snooty steppers but land at a place you like and only land there if you want to maximize your points how the rank system works if you don't know exactly how the rank system works already i'm going to break down the three main ways you gain points and it's actually fairly simple in the sense that you get placement points most likely at the main milestone similar to how the tournaments are so in solos top 75 will give you some top 50 then 45 then 40 and so on and so on then obviously in team game modes like duos and stuff it'll be a little bit lower maybe starting at top 40 instead but it keeps the same principles these points as you go high into the ranks will seem like you're getting less just because your bus fare is higher so i wouldn't really bank on these to carry you out then we also get rewarded for kills as well this is what you mainly want to focus on i already explained how the rank has an impact on how many points you gain but the placement you are when you're eliminating the players also makes a difference over big milestones like top 75 top 50 etc you will actually gain more points for an elimination this is to reward players for playing for end game giving incentive to go for kills later on rather than looking to just go and drop a 20 bomb this is why you want to avoid dying too much off spawn because most of the points are actually in the later stages of the game anyways but i'll talk more about how we can use this when we go into the strategy the final way to gain points is from objectives like claiming the center island or the weather radio tower thing even though this has not been confirmed i think especially when they took it out from the og season and seeing the point difference we are pretty much 99 percent sure at this point that you definitely do get some sort of point incentive for claiming stuff like the center islands and objectives exactly how many though i am unsure i have actually had games where I've had zero kills but managed to play in the center island and actually have gone at points. So I'm fairly sure at this point that you definitely do get points. Now we know how it works, let's get into the strategy. Starting off with the off spawn. When off spawn, before even looking to fight, you want to always aim to have 100 shield and some sort of good loot like a shotgun. The amount of times I see someone W King players and I'm not going to lie, I've even been guilty to this myself at times. Without even having good enough loot to fight or even a 100 shield, it's just ridiculous. And you're actually just asking to go back to the lobby. So make sure you don't get distracted too much by people around you fighting. And just focus on getting good loot, getting a bit of shield. Because you don't even gain that many points for getting kills off spawn anyway. I think especially once you're getting to them higher ranks as well, just one off spawn killing gold is just enough to make points. So don't worry too much about dropping a 20 kill game off spawn, because once you get to them high ranks, it's going to punish you harder than it helps you. Just worry about getting good loot and being consistent off spawn. Next up, master one drop spot. Some of you here will have one drop spot in the back of your mind that you just land at and you just know it you just know it like the back of your hand but i think the biggest problem i see amongst players stuck in that gold rank is how bad their drops are and for most people it's just mainly down to jumping from one drop spot to another especially when i was climbing through it felt super easy for me to get off spawn kills just because of how bad some of the players drops are I recommend you pick one POI you like, like Snooty or Reckless Railways is another really good one, and just learn all the best places to open your glider for your POI, and this will just come with time. 
and just landing at that one spot continuously. And then from there, you'll naturally start winning more and more fight. Now we are absolutely destroying kids off spawn and we have made it to the mid game. Should we go for kills? Should we avoid them? What should we do? If your fo sole focus is just to make it out of gold rank and don't care about anything else, then the best, your best bet to actually get out is just play for end game. But for 99% of players, and including myself, that would be really boring. And I would actually recommend looking to get a mid-game kill or two. Because mid-game kills is what kind of made up the majority of my points when I made it out super early. And they do tend to reward you big points for kills. I think killing a player in a higher rank than you in mid-game could even give you like 10% points for just one kill. So it can be big to get those mid-game kills to increase your chances of winning the overall game as well as gaining more points. If you are looking to win more and more mid-game fights, my best tip, and this still applies for off-small massively as well, is height advantage just abuse the living daylights out of the brand new zeus lightning bolt thing as of making this video right now that zeus lightning bolt on high ground is just super broken especially in builds as soon as someone boxes up you need to use that thing every single time it's guaranteed free damage and at times it will even guarantee you free kills so if something's broken in the game don't cry about it just use and abuse it when you talk about mid game we cannot not talk about loadouts with so many cool and broken stuff in the game this season it makes you think should i take the wings should i take the lightning bolt thing which shotgun should i take which ar should i take should i take an ar an smg and a lot of the times it can be a bit overwhelming but i'm here to clear it all up for you and give you some of the best loadouts first of all let's get in some of the newer stuff the wings if you see them wings it's a must take it's the only source of mobility this season in all honesty it's just amazing for getting around the map escaping fights finding fights and just so much more just getting yourself to zone stuff and it's just gonna be a lifesaver in so many situations so no matter what my loadout is i'm taking that every single time i see them i think the spawn rates for them are actually fairly low but they pop up quite a bit and everyone's carrying them so you shouldn't struggle too much finding them i know the olympus chest as well have like a 55 percent spawn rate so if you can get one of them it could help you get them a lot but the next new thing in the game is the zeus light lightning bolt this is another must carry in my opinion i'm actually taking this over a set of meds just because of how good it is it literally two taps of fully built metal wall and has three shots in one charge so if you're looking to debuking and get into people's faces i actually have a personal recommendation that i've been taking for my loadout and that is actually the wings the brand new gatekeeper shotgun. I think this season the shotgun is mainly up to you because I think they're all strong in their own ways. But I'm personally taking the gatekeeper. It's kind of like a tactical shotgun but with less bullets. And it does tend to deal really good damage. I think I remember hitting people for like 130 in the head with it. I know it's only got three bullets in there, but that's why I'm pairing it with even SMG if you're getting in their face. But because you have no sniper, I do kind of prefer the Ward Forged Assault Rifle just to kind of couple up with it. And it's just like a Nerf Strike Assault Rifle really, but it's still fairly good to take. Then in my last two slots, it's got to be the Lightning Bolt and just one set of meds. Preferably shields, any shields will do. I just prefer to take big pots or chug splashes if I can find them. If you're someone who's good with sniper and you prefer a sniper, which at times, I'm not going to lie, I do like to take a sniper. I can be pretty crazy with them. And there's times where I just want to play with a bit of range. So if you're like me at times and want to play with a little bit more range, I'd obviously go for the sniper. I mean, the new DMR actually is pretty decent. And also, obviously, we've got the Reaper Sniper, I think it's called, from last season. So both of them are still really strong options. It's kind of up to you what you want to take. I mean, don't overlook that DMR, though. It literally does, like, 60 damage or something to the body. And you can fire it, like, instantly with no bullet drop off as well so it's literally crazy dmr then we have the shotgun followed by an smg and then obviously you want the wings and the lightning bolt if you can't find the wings of the lightning bolt though in either of them loadouts just swap them out for meds but if you're really struggling for meds this season you can literally just use the wings to escape from most situations so that's why i'm not worrying too much about carrying two or three sets of meds in literally every mid game fight in gold rank you just want to go for that high ground. I don't know what it is, 
but most gold rank players are just going to struggle if you get high ground. So at the start of every fight, aim to get high, and that's just going to set you up in the best position for builds and no builds. And I know I've said this before, but I just cannot express enough how important height actually is. And then from there, it's kind of up to you just to make sure you play the correct way, and make the correct plays to try and get that win. And finally, the end game. This is mainly about closing that game and finding your way to win. Obviously, this depends on a lot of situations. It can depend on zones, your loadouts, your health. So many different things can impact this. I recommend for most people, you avoid fighting a little bit more around the top 10 mark. Just because the points from like top 10 to top 5 are massive. Unless you got like really good loot and you're confident in your skill to kill everyone, my best advice would be just to look to rotate towards any sort of elevation. If there's big mountains in zones, rotate there because they'll often put you in something called a power position, which just gives you the best view over the rest of the lobby. It's going to help you out a ton. During this time, most of the lobbies will actually tend to die out quite quickly anyway, so from there you can just clutch up. But I want to show you this whole strategy in game now, so rather than me telling you all this information, you can see what to do as well. So I'm in a game now, and this is literally diamond ranked lobbies on the first day of the season, so they might be a little bit sweatier than your normal gold lobbies, but the same strategy still applies. First of all, avoid landing the underworld, Grim Gate, Mount Olympus, Ballers Battleground. These places here with the medallions are just going to be super overly contested. And for the loot that you're going to get there, you're going to see it's not even going to worth it. As an example here, I'm going to land Grim Gate. I'm going to show you how much hassle I have right off spawn trying to win fights and stuff. And you'll be able to see for yourself how chaotic this is. And hopefully this is going to convince you not to land at a place like this. So first of all, whenever we're landing off spawn, we always need to land on some sort of gun or chest or something. So you have guaranteed loot straight away. So I'm going to land on this chest and then I'm instantly going to run over to here. And then to maximize your chances of winning off spawn now, you need to look around for loot before even starting a fight. And look, I'm in a fight before I can even look around for loot. This is how you know a drop spot is not great to be landing at when you can't even look around for loot without running into players. So again, I'm going to keep trying to avoid players here. I'm going to keep looking around to try and loot up. And you want to aim really for a shotgun, shield, some sort of mats, and like SMGs, and just decent loot. Just loot that you feel like you can easily win with. As you can see, I'm still just trying to loot up and just look at everything that's going on all around me. Let's go pick up the shotgun. These. And there we go. I've just been shot. Again, you can see I can't even do anything. Without players just coming straight for me. And there we go. I've just died like that. So that should be your cue to avoid these places at all costs. So I'm in another game now. And I'm going to show you exactly how to play. So I'm on the alt account. So this is currently gold one lobbies. And rather than landing a place like Grimgate or the Underworld. You want to land at a place like Snooty Steppers or Reckless Railways. A place that's going to be much better off in terms of loot to player ratio. And I'll tell you exactly why once we get to mid game. Why I prefer Snooty and Reckless Railways over the other jobs. Because I've got a little secret way to to guarantee you a few extra points now looking at this we literally only have one other player with us and when landing always look for some sort of gun or chest to try and land on just because it's going to increase your chances of living right away and what you want to do is avoid fighting at all costs i know it could be quite hard at the start to not get distracted by all the fighting going on around you. But if you actually want to make points, there's a few things you need to aim for before hopping into your first fight. And this is roughly somewhere around 500 materials, preferably 100 shield and some sort of spare shields as well. And decent loot to fight with. As you can see now, I'm sort of in that perfect scenario near enough. I could do a few more extra mats. But apart from that, I've pretty much got a very, very good loadout to go out and win fights with. And and just like that now, I've now got the loot to go and take out everyone around me. I've got just over 500 bats, 100 shield, 100 health, as well as some spare shields and some really good loot as well. So we're going to try sneak up on this guy. Whenever you see someone, every single time, all you want to do is try and sneak up on them and get 
the first little bit of damage if possible. If you ever watch any pro player when they're playing the solo cash cut, what you'll notice is they always get the first tag on their opponent. The next thing you want to do in every single fight, regardless of whether they're in a building or not, wherever they are, is build up to the high ground. As you can see, this guy is inside of the building. And rather than just heading straight in and fighting him, I've instantly gone up to the roof. From here now, I can kind of plan out how I'm going to play this. And I can kind of play at my own speed. And just like that, I managed to pick up the kill nice and easily. And I took absolutely zero damage in return in that fight. And that all just stemmed from being able to go up to the high ground. Once the zone has fully closed or it's about to close, if you've landed at Reckless Railway, I want you to head over to this mountain over here. I think it might be a little bit down maybe, some, somewhere around this mark. And if you landed at Snooty like I've done, you want to head over to this mountain here. Earlier I mentioned how getting things like the center island can actually give you some extra bonus points. But this is also another bonus way to get points by getting the forecast tower. Now all you want to do is head over and wait for the boss to spawn. He'll spawn somewhere around the tower so don't worry too much. And then you just want to take out the boss, as well as all his minions. And then just insert the card like so. And just like that, we've probably guaranteed ourselves a few extra bonus points. Now we're actually in mid-game, and the lobby's dying out fairly quickly. If you've got the wings as well, you might even be able to get over and get the other forecast tower. And it gives you a massive advantage, because you can also see where all the next zones are as well. So as you can see, next zone, I'm going to have a max pull, so I can head over to zone early now. And usually in mid-game around this point, I want to look to pick up one to two kills. It's up to you if you feel like you can pick up a few more, but I just aim for around about the one to two kill mark And again, we're gonna try and get a little bit of counter damage If we can get the entry damage into the fight, it's gonna put you at a massive advantage Looks like that guy was literally one HP anyway For the purpose of this video, I am gonna just go W key crazy to teach you guys how to fight But if I was actually playing this for real, I'd probably chill out a little bit more and it looks like there's a guy trying to snipe me over there. So we're going to just head over. Always you want to get high ground. Every single time you start a fight. And whether you've done damage or whether you've been hit for big damage. Always get high ground first. That is the most important thing. You need to get into your head how important high ground actually is. Boxing like that just puts you at a massive disadvantage. For someone to make a play on you when you edit out. Right from the start of the fight, you need to be getting high ground. This is an absolute must for winning mid-game fight. Just slow your playstyle down. I'm slowing it down a lot more than I usually would for the purpose of this video. But just keep it simple. Stick to the basics of Fortnite. As soon as I come to third part of this fight, I'm just going to build straight up. Why? Because it's going to give me the best position possible to try and pick up that kill. I'm not trying to do anything too flicky or fancy. I'm just going to play it slow, put a little bit of pressure on, and again, we're just keeping it slow. Don't worry too much about them dipping, just worry about keeping it slow, playing the game nice and relaxed, sticking to that high ground. You can always come off the high ground if it's going to be easier to get some sort of damage or get the kill, like I've done there. But for the majority of it, starting on the high ground is just going to give you the best position to go for any plays you want to go for. Now I see someone over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to land a little bit away from him because he does have to rotate to me. Looking at the zone now, he has to rotate this way to get to it. So he should rotate towards me. If I can get that. There we go. That's a big, big damage shot and we managed to pick up the kill. Nice and easy. Some of you might not have like insane aim just to be able to like 200 to 0 someone like so. And if you are one of those players, just keep it simple and stick to them basics. It's going to help you out more than you can even imagine. And just like that, I'm currently here on high ground. Get a big beam on him. I managed to pick up a kill. 92. And we managed to pick up that elim as well. A lot of people ask the question of, should I go for the center island or should I not? Now, you definitely do get points for the center island, so it does kind of spark the question, is it worth it or not? And the way I see it is, if you have really good loot, like the loot I have now, you probably want to avoid going to the center island. The only reason I'm here right now is literally just for the purpose of this video. But realistically, in my ELO lobbies, with the loot I got now, I would just play for the win. If you're like super scuffed, 
getting this loot is going to upgrade all your loot and it's going to give you some points and put you in a position to win the game but if you've got like gold loot and you've got loot that you think you can comfortably win the game with then it's not even worth it like literally look i haven't even upgraded any of my loot at all from this the only thing it's gave me is a new set of wings imagine i came in here though i had maybe like all green loot i would then have a gold dmr to play with and a purple assault rifle as well and sometimes you can even get like purple and gold shotguns from it after capturing the island the chances are you're gonna be in the next zone so what your best bet would be while you're up here is just to kind of chill out relax maybe look for some beams on people below and just play for that win especially around that top six top ten mark you get a lot of points for surviving from like top ten to top two the amount of points are just crazy but Again, for the purpose of this video, so I can show you how to fight an end game and help some of you guys out, I'm going to go off and look for some more kills. So we see a guy here, and my first instinct is just to get some entry damage. Let's land above, see if I can get a little bit of entry damage on him. Now, it looks like he does have the medallion, so he might be a decent player. Now, I've only hit him 23 for this instance, but we're going to keep it simple. We're going to keep it very simple. We've got to get the high ground. And just absolutely obliterate him like that. Because I don't know why he's using the lightning bolt. A quick tip for you guys. Because I think most of you already know now. With the lightning bolt. When you actually use it. You stand still. Look. I don't move at all. Which makes you so easy to being like shot at. So if someone's using it against you. Don't even bother like sitting in a box. Just come out and shoot them. Because the chances are you'll just be able to beam them. And it's a free kill. But if you're the person using them, because they are really good to use, you need to use them at the right situations. The best time to use the lightning bolt, I'm going to take it to show you, is when someone's boxed up. Whenever someone's boxed up or you've got them super low, that is the perfect time to use it. But the time between the second and the third shot is going to punish you so hard if they're not boxed up or they're not low on health. Let's see if this guy boxes up. 28. This guy just doesn't know how to build. Oh, does he? There we go. We picked up that kill nice and easy. I don't really know what he was doing. 90. There we go. We managed to get a bit of a health advantage on him. And... Again, he hasn't really boxed up. So the lightning bolt's not going to be good in this situation. And we could just pick it up with a shotgun. I mean, once you've got loot like this in Endgame and you've managed to pick up some kills, it's fairly easy to take out most players, in all honesty, just from sticking to the basics of the games. Players like Mr. Savage aren't necessarily technically the best players in the whole of the game, but they do the basics so well to the point where it makes them look crazy at the game and they can kill some of the best players from it. I've managed to find... The last guy over here. And it looks like he's a little bit stuck in storm. You know what? I'm going to use the lightning bolt on him now. He's a little bit oblivious of where I am. He might just absolutely destroy me. But there we go. We managed to pick up a 13 kill win. And it shows you don't need to go crazy landing at some of these mad POIs. To be able to drop high kill games in this lobby. I think sometimes you just need to see someone do it. And just sort of showcase what they're thinking while they're doing it. To be able to see how you can do it as well. Hopefully me being in this game and getting a 101.14 elimination win. And me sort of talking through how I fight players is going to help you out. High ground is your best friend in 99% of scenarios. Whether you're keying a building, whether you're keying someone in a box, whatever it is. Whether you're third partying, going up for that high ground is just going to put you in the situation where you have the full freedom to go out and win every single fight. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment any questions down below because I do respond to all comments. If you like this video, you may also like this video on screen now.